Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Together, we are Abe in oneness and love. So in today's video, the information was brought forward to me a while ago, at least a few weeks or a month or so ago. And I'm now sort of feeling like it's a good time to get it out there, especially since we needed to first talk about you know, some other stuff like the timeline, uh, that spiral time thing, that whole complicated time thing, as well as the raw and sun information that's been coming through and a few other things. Um, but this video is going to be quite a bit of a mind bender, just a heads up. It's going to twist your mind into pretzels, as Dolores Cannon would say. Um, I want you to go into this video with an open heart and an open mind. And of course, if things make sense or not, you're still integrating the higher vibration behind the messages that's happening on a much deeper level, regardless if you understand what's going on or not. In this video, I tapped into some very loaded questions from the Facebook group. Um, so remember a while ago when the solar observatory shutdowns happened. We'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about Planet X or Planet Nibiru, the 3D and 5D suns, black holes, as well as this concept of these infinite time capsules, as well as a bunch of other things that we're going to dive into and stretch our minds about. The first question is about the sun simulator. So someone brought forward information about a sort of sun simulator. I had personally never heard of it before. I know others have brought up similar things regarding the sun and have been asking me this. So when I looked it up on YouTube, it looked and felt very unfamiliar to me as if the sun that other people were seeing and labeling as the sun simulator was not the same sun that I was seeing in my sky. And so I asked Abe about it, and they said, Talk about the sun will be loaded. Loaded question, loaded answer. Let us first start by saying that the reality that you view around you is a projection of the frequency and energy that you hold within you. As within, so without. The 3D earth plane that you exist upon can be seen as a plane, a simulator, what you humans like to call a quote-unquote matrix. Your consciousness plays a big role in creating the reality around you. This is why 3D and 5D are coexisting right now within your physical plane. It is like having two quote-unquote matrix realities overlaid one on top of the other. You, as the avatar, have the ability to tap into one or both of these matrixes or matrices, whatever it is, through your consciousness and energetic frequency and vibration. Some of you tap into only one, either the 3D matrix or the 5D matrix. Most of you go between the two, and it all depends upon where you're able to hold your frequency. The 3D matrix and the 5D matrix are overlaid on top of each other, very much still interacting with each other. It's all about your consciousness. So Abe is showing me the vibrations of 3D and 5D, and they're like waves, and they're running in and out of each other. And 3D is very much more of a slower and lower wave shape, and 5D is a much more higher frequency, faster wave shape. And they're not completely separate, so they're still very much overlapping each other, but they also still very much hold their separate frequencies. Eventually, these two waves will separate um, and play out their own wave, frequency, vibration, whatever. The 3D matrix is already beginning to break down and break away from the 5D matrix. Abe is showing me like an old TV where the picture gets skewed and you have to like bang on the TV to get the picture to get more clear um, or like a radio signal that keeps going out and coming back on. And this is to show me how 
that 3D vibration wave is very much slowing down and the 5D vibration wave is speeding up and they are pulling apart. They said this is what is happening to your 3D reality or rather matrix. Yes, your sun is different now for both the 3D matrix and the 5D matrix. The sun is real in both the 3D matrix and the 5D matrix. Those of you who are existing mostly in the 3D consciousness will notice or begin to notice a breakdown of your sun. Many of you now view your sun as a quote unquote simulator or similar to that. It is not man made from what we can sense, it is still very much your real sun. It is simply quote unquote breaking down in the reality of your 3D matrix, just as all things in your 3D matrix will eventually begin to break down as well. It is the quote unquote glitching out of the 3D matrix. Over the past few months, Jessica has been connecting more strongly with the sun that she perceives in her 5D consciousness and awareness. When she connects to the sun, she has the feeling of it being even stronger, more grand, and more powerful than she ever remembered in her entire life. And she has always connected to the sun ever since childhood. She is perceiving the 5D New Earth sun through her 5D New Earth consciousness and awareness. When Jessica saw videos and received messages from others regarding a quote-unquote sun simulator, it confused her because it was nothing like what she was experiencing in her own reality and her relationship with the sun that she perceives. For those of you existing mostly in 5D consciousness, the sun that is in your sky is bigger, brighter, whiter, than it was in your 3D Earth awareness. This is because you are existing in the illusion or that belief of an ascended galaxy with an ascended sun and ascended placement of the new Earth 5D in that ascended galaxy. You are connecting to the 5D Earth's galactic sun in your still very 3D Earth experience. You're just tapping into the 5D matrix from where you are, through your consciousness. For those who are still existing in 3D consciousness, you are connecting to a different sun, the 3D Earth sun in its placement in the 3D Earth's galaxy. 5D New Earth reality and ascended galaxy is not necessarily a different galaxy. It is the same galaxy, but in a different dimension. So it will feel as if it's a whole new galaxy, but it's the same galaxy, just a higher dimension, a higher frequency, a higher vibration to where it feels new. It's our consciousness that's that portal into that new 5D reality. Think of being lost in the woods on a camp trip. 3D Earth was very much lost in the woods of outer space, a lone planet existing alone in the galaxy, far away from source, far away from knowing who you truly are. New Earth 5D existence is very much quote unquote found and integrated back with the rest of the camping party. We know that this sounds confusing because your 5D Earth and experience are still very much coexisting with your 3D Earth and experience, that overlay of the 3D matrix and the 5D matrix. However, for those of you who are able to fully separate your reality and consciousness into 5D New Earth illusion, that belief of 5D New Earth, your experiences and awareness will be within the paradigm of illusion or belief of 5D New Earth, which already exists separate from your 3D Earth. For most of you, the physical reality of 5D New Earth has not shifted or taken place yet because it is still being created. However, it is possible to shift your consciousness and awareness to 5D New Earth first, therefore shifting your perspective and current reality into first the illusion or the belief of 5D, 
as you coexist with 3D reality, and then eventually that reality of 5D down the line. You are at a time in your great shift in which you will separate completely from 3D Earth, and through the law of attraction, as well as many other universal laws, you will rendezvous with 5D New Earth reality of love and oneness already existing in her new placement in the Ascended Galaxy. This shift does not involve a physical shift from one planet to another. This shift, through your consciousness, automatically takes you through a portal not physically, but energetically through a portal, from one dimension into the next. You are riding high in that portal right now. As you move further and further along in that portal to 5D, you're going to notice more and more 3D things in your reality falling away, because 3D does not vibrationally match with 5D. The sun in your sky plays a big role in your ascension process, it is one tangible thing that people who exist in 5D consciousness and awareness can look to for assistance on their journey or their path. And I'm seeing like the sun being like a light on their path, literally to 5D New Earth. By connecting to the ascended 5D sun, you connect to the reality of New Earth 5D in that new home placement of New Earth 5D in the ascended galaxy. In a way, your connection to the 5D New Earth Sun transports you from the 3D Earth reality that you are coexisting in right now into the 5D New Earth illusion or that belief of where you're going and finally, eventually, into the 5D New Earth reality that you will end up in. Connect through the Sun even those of you who still exist in 3D consciousness, if you bring your attention to your sun as it begins to break down, this quote-unquote weirdness or quote-unquote oddity will open your consciousness to realizing that your reality is nothing as it seems and what you thought was real was merely an illusion. It will open you up to connecting you to who you truly are, allowing the opening up of your ascension to grow greater into the direction of New Earth 5D. The 5D New Earth Sun is a manifestation of the reality of 5D brought into your reality of 3D as a way to guide you as a portal of open energy that connects your 3D experience and reality to your 5D first illusion or that belief, and ultimately to your 5D physical reality. The sun is a portal between many worlds, many galaxies, many beings, many forms of consciousness. Use it to connect to your new home planet of 5D new earth reality. All energy on 3D Earth is interpreted through your conscious awareness, as well as your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic state of being. You have to understand that you are in a time in which your awareness, consciousness, vibration, and energetic frequency is everything in terms of perceiving the world around you. You are coexisting in 3D and 5D together. Alignment and law of attraction, as well as other universal laws, come into effect in terms of co-creating your direct reality. This is very much, in very basic terms, similar to putting two people in a room, looking at the same wall. One person says, the wall is blue, and the other person says, the wall is red. To each of them, the color of the wall they see is very much their reality. It does not mean that they are denying what the other person says or believes. It's just that they have very different perceptions of what the wall color is from where they are. So the next question from the Facebook group had something to do with wanting clarity on the solar observatory shutdown that happened like a few months ago. 
the person writes, several people are saying there's some sort of censorship on observing space right now. Is this even possible? What I really want to know is, are we being prevented from seeing something in space as part of some nefarious agenda? And what came through is, this question ties into the 3D matrix and the 5D matrix overlaying upon each other. Simultaneously, as 3D matrix and 5D matrix overlap, 3D is breaking down, glitching out, while 5D is building up and becoming stronger until it will eventually become the collective consciousness and physical reality. In terms of the solar observatory shutdown, from where we are in non-physical, we very much sense that this is something that had happened and is happening in the 3D matrix of creation. In connection to extraterrestrials being spotted around the sun, we sense that extraterrestrials, or rather higher dimensional beings, are making themselves more visible in your 3D matrix. They have a purpose, and their purpose is to help in the great shift of Gaia. But we sense with these specific galactic beings that their purpose is to help in the shift of 3D matrix. There are many galactic beings, higher dimensional and higher frequency energies, helping and assisting in bringing 5D into full fruition. But at the same time, there are many galactic beings that are helping 3D Gaia and 3D Matrix to safely shift out of that connection to 5D. Again, there will be a complete split between 3D and 5D Earth. So, what happens to 3D Earth? This is a big question. There's a lot of attention to 5D Earth's creation and ascension, but now we want to shift and speak about 3D Earth. 3D Earth will not be destroyed, but it will continue to move further away from its placement in the 3D galaxy, further away from the sun, further away into the depths of the galaxy, until eventually it will reintegrate with the universal energy. The galactic beings and ships that are making themselves visible in your 3D Earth plane are galactic beings that can lower themselves vibrationally into the 3D Earth vibration. There are not many galactic beings that can do so willingly. The ones who can are the ones who will help with the safe separation of 3D and the safe reintegration into the universal energy in a way that will not offer any destruction to the galaxy. The 3D Earth planet will not be quote-unquote destroyed. If it were destroyed, it would offer destruction in a way that would affect the entire galaxy. When a whole planet is destroyed in some way, it hinders the galaxy in many ways. So what is happening to 3D Earth is simply an energetic reintegration into the universal energy, which we'll talk more about in just a bit. Jessica asked, will it be going into a black hole? And we say, more so like a cold hole of blackness. In this cold hole of blackness, the 3D Earth planet will be transformed into energy that will reintegrate back into the universe. I then asked, will there be people on the planet when it goes into this cold hole of blackness, the black hole? And what came through is no. By that time, there will be nothing existing on the planet. It will be empty. Everything will have fully transitioned into 5D or transitioned back into spirit, into non-physical. The galactic beings that are making themselves visible on your current planet are only made visible in your 3D eyesight because they are the ones able to lower their vibration into that 3D space. Otherwise, you would not perceive them and would not be able to perceive them in 3D. They are playing important roles in 3D Earth during this breakaway from 5D Earth. For now, it is about monitoring the 3D Earth transition, 
the breakdown, the quote unquote glitching out during this breakaway time so that the 3D planet Earth does not destroy into itself. Once the breakaway of 3D from 5D finally and fully happens, eventually down the line, these galactic beings who are able to lower their frequency and vibration to be seen in your 3D Earth perception and awareness will help in transitioning the 3D Earth into its new orbit um, in the outer reaches of the galaxy to continue playing out that energy and continue on its new orbit. You ask in your question, are we being prevented from seeing something in space as part of some nefarious agenda? And we say from where we are, of course you are being prevented from seeing something in space. We mentioned that the sun is a portal between many worlds, many galaxies, many beings, many forms of consciousness. This goes for both the 3D sun as well as the 5D sun. The galactic beings that are here to help your 3D planet's transition are connecting to your 3D sun's portal. In order to connect to your 3D vibration, they must lower their vibration, which is why they are being seen by you. You would not be able to perceive higher vibrational galactic ships with your human 3D eyes. Now, whether you view what is happening as a nefarious agenda or not comes from your energetic vibration. It is mostly about your energetic frequency and what you are able to perceive in the reality around you based upon where you are vibrationally and energetically. And then I asked, isn't it a possibility that the galactic beings that were caught on camera out of the sun's portal are actually higher vibrational or 5D beings and helping with 5D rather than 3D? Like maybe the shutdown, that solar observatory shutdown, was in response to galactic beings coming out of the 5D sun. Is that a possibility? And what came through was most definitely it's a possibility, but higher, much higher vibrational beings and energies are assisting your 5D Earth transition, the 5D Earth side. They will not even be perceived by 5D perception or awareness. The galactic ships being observed by your human eyes are being perceived in the 3D Earth plane. But again, because 3D and 5D are in this overlay space where they're happening simultaneously, coexisting together, people who have consciousness in 5D are still aware of things happening in 3D. And people who have consciousness in 3D are still aware of what's happening in 5D. But their awareness from both of those sides are coming from whatever side they're on. So if you're in 3D and you have that 3D consciousness and awareness, if you're sensing something that's happening in 5D, you're sensing it through that 3D filter, that 3D awareness perception. If you're in 5D and you're witnessing something happening in 3D, you're witnessing it from that 5D perception, awareness, and filter. So I asked about this perception in 3D. So so I asked, you know, in if people see ETs or aliens or whatever, even like Bigfoot or like other of those like paranormal stuff, does that mean that they're existing in 3D? And what came through was yes. And I asked, will people be able to perceive these things in 5D? And what came through was not in the, in the sense or in the way that we perceive it in 3D. So the, what I'm getting is sort of like ghosts or like if a house is haunted. So a, in 3D, the perception would be a ghost or a haunting or something. But I see that in 5D... The perception of a ghost is not in that awareness or perception in 3D of seeing it as a ghost. In 5D, it's more, um, Abe is saying that it's more perceived as a spirit. And I'm asking what's the difference between a spirit and a ghost. And Abe is saying that the spirit or a spirit is 
um, has more of the energy of oneness versus a ghost um, has more of the energy of separation, um, which is why it causes more of that hunting and stuff like that. And I know this is off topic, but I wanted to kind of throw it in there because I'm it's on my mind right now. Um, and so I'm like, in terms of those other like just random often lower vibrational or lower frequency things like like gremlins or like Abe calls them pesky other dimensional or like uh, creatures and things like that like paranormal stuff that are not really of this world and even maybe lower frequency alien abductions or lower frequency extraterrestrials like would they be popping up in 5d and what came through was no and i asked why and abe said it's because 3d is like a open cereal box it attracts the bugs and the mice and like Many people can have their hands on it. And 5D is like a closed cereal box. So like you won't have all these things sort of popping up into your 5D awareness or perception, if that makes sense. So the next question from the Facebook group was someone asking about our thoughts on planet Nibiru, otherwise known as planet X, passing our orbit This is part of the whole pole shift, and it happens every 3,600 years. Part of the reset is what the person added, and the person wanted to know, what are your thoughts on this? So um, to start off, the thing that came to me is that planet X or planet Nibiru will be in our orbit, um, our proximity for at least a few years. It's not going to come into our orbit and leave within a couple of months. It's going to be hanging around within our within the proximity of our planets around the sun for at least a few years. So keep this in mind. So what came through in, in regards to this question is things started to get a little mind bendy. Um, so it, it's going to get a little confusing, but at the same time, if you open up your mind enough, it does sort of make sense. <laughs> so um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So Abe starts off by saying that not long now will planet X be opening in the awareness of those on your 3D Earth planet. Lost knowledge of many will be coming to the surface when planet X comes into the orbit around the 3D sun, not the 5D sun. Planet X exists in the 3D awareness, meaning in the galaxy of your 3D Earth. It does not exist in the ascended galaxy of your 5D New Earth. The next thing that came to me was that planet X is the yin to your 3D Earth's yang. And that's when the thought came to me of, is planet X Earth in some way? And Abe said, planet X is Earth 3D. It is the future transformation of 3D Earth. It's not the current Earth now, but Earth in 3,600 years as it continues on its 3D path after the split off of 5D. And first, it had come to me, I remember reading or hearing that planet X was bigger than Earth in size. So I I brought that forward and I said, well, planet X is supposed to be bigger than Earth. So how can it be the same Earth? And what came through was Abe actually said that from where they are, they don't sense that planet X is bigger than Earth. But if that's what we perceive, actually, it is possible for a planet to um, change in mass, in size, if it needed to in some way. The planets are living beings just as humans are. And if there's a need for a planet to change in size or mass, it can actually manifest that for itself. 
it's possible that a planet like planet X, whose orbit is so far away from the sun, so it they're describing it as like um, a very cold and lonely orbit. So if it needed to somehow, like I'm seeing a person, how it puts on weight in the cold uh, in the winter, it's like maybe the planet needed to put on some weight, uh, gain bigger in mass. It could manifest that for itself. No, it is not the same planet Earth as you know it, because Earth as you know it today is gone from that planet. It is the same vessel, but not the same Earth. And then I asked, but I thought that you said that Earth 3D was going into a cold hole of blackness, that black hole. And what came through was, yes, it will happen in approximately 3600 Earth years now known as Planet X, because now is when there is nobody on it. I had asked, is there any life on Planet X? And what came through was that, yes, there is life on Planet X, but no human life and no substantial life. So probably just small organisms and rocks and stuff like that. And yet even those small organisms and rocks and stuff that we don't consider as substantial will argue that they are in fact substantial if you want to get into that. But point being, there's no human life or full-on animals and plants. They go on to say that it can safely enter the 3D Earth's galactic sun when it transforms into the cold hole of blackness. So again, the 3D sun as they said before, was going to turn into a black hole or what they call a cold hole of blackness, eventually. They go on to say, 3D Earth, when it falls away from 5D, when it breaks away, it falls further away from the sun, entering the new outer orbit. Lonely planet in the lone neck of the woods, in what you would call outer space, what we call home. The galactic beings that you are sensing in your 3D Earth awareness, most of them at least, will help to transport the 3D Earth breakaway into the outer orbit of the current 3D Earth galaxy. They are helping to send 3D Earth energy out to the outer reaches of the 3D galaxy. In approximately 3600 years, your 3D Earth planet will find its way back into the orbit of its former placement when it was the 3D Earth that you currently exist in today. It will then be called an unfamiliar Planet X, and it will be but an empty vessel. By the time Planet X comes back around into your 3D Earth's galaxy and closer proximity to your current Earth, 3D Earth consciousness will see mostly a split from 5D Earth consciousness. In the split of the 3D Earth and galaxy, apart from the 5D New Earth and Ascended Galaxy, what happens is the New Earth 5D exists in a completely different Ascended Galaxy. The transfer is made through consciousness. It is the shifting from 3D matrix into 5D matrix. What happens to the 3D Earth is that it falls further away from the Sun and into the outermost reaches of the galaxy and into a new orbit. Along with these changes, the Sun also changes. In the 3D Earth galaxy, the Sun will begin to quote-unquote glitch out. So those in current 3D Earth are already noticing these glitches in the Sun right now and it will eventually turn into a black hole, or rather a cold hole of blackness. When this happens, Planet X will be in the direct orbit and proximity of the 3D Earth Sun, which will then be the transformed Sun into a cold hole of blackness. When the 3D Earth Sun turns into a black hole, there will have been a complete split between 3D and 5D Earth already. So those in 5D Earth reality will be witnessing and perceiving the 5D Earth sun by then. So they will not notice the 3D Earth sun turning into a black hole. 
On the other side, the 3D Earth will be taking its new place in the outer reaches of the galaxy to begin its new orbit of that 3600-year orbit cycle around the outer reaches of the galaxy. And when that happens, when the 3D Earth Sun turns into a black hole, it will basically suck up Planet X. And then I asked, does the entire galaxy that that 3D Earth existed in get sucked into the black hole? And what came through was Planet X does. That's its destiny in a way. I think anything else close to the Sun will probably get sucked into the black hole, but the farther planets won't because of the proximity. Um, but the whole galaxy will not get sucked into that black hole, just in terms of proximity. Again, 5D New Earth has nothing to worry about because it's basically in a new galaxy, but rather a new dimension where it is not aware of what's happening in the 3D galaxy's dimension. Abe then showed me the process of you know, our current 3D Earth breaking away, falling into the outer reaches of the galaxy to fall into its new orbit, then that planet coming back around again in 3600 years as what we now know as Planet X. And Abe said, think infinity over and over and over again. I asked, okay, so how many times has this happened? How many times has Planet X come back around and what came through was infinity and I was like what this is when I got confused I'm like what's happening how can I grasp how can I wrap my head around this I was like okay how many times has the 3d earth shifted into 5d earth and what came through was infinity and then I asked okay how many times have I been sitting here asking this same question to you and what came through was infinity and I was like oh my god I don't even know how to process this so then Abe brought forward the movie Interstellar again which of course is it made everything come back into perspective where they showed me the image of the scene um, if you haven't watched Interstellar yet Go watch it immediately after this. <laughs> I recommend it. Um, but what happens in this scene is Matthew McConaughey's character goes into a black hole. When he goes in there, like his ship falls apart and he is thrown into this space time place of where it looked like the woven tapestry of time. From what I got, it felt like it contained all moments, all memories, everything that exists in the universe and ever will exist expanding upon itself. And he was able to sort of witness a moment in his memory, um, sort of like a time capsule in his past or quote unquote past, something significant that had happened just literally like a day or two before that moment that he was in. And in that moment that he was observing, he saw his daughter in her room and she's on her bed. And when you're in the perspective of the daughter being in that room, some books come flying off the shelf. And in that moment that he's observing, he's also behind the bookshelf in this woven tapestry of time black hole place and he's like banging on the bookshelf and the books are flying off so it's like you have these two perspectives being in the room with the with the daughter and being in this black hole space observing this time being part of it by flying off those books I it's so hard to explain I'm going to put a link to this scene below so make sure you watch it but it's like being in two places at once, having those two separate perspectives, one of them being a higher perspective because he's in that black hole space time um, woven tapestry of time place. And he's also in the room with that lower perspective, not realizing that that would be him in the future, if that makes sense. So it's like him observing the past, being in the future, being in the past, realizing the connection to the future. It's very, very confusing. 
and at the same time having that moment existing as like an encapsulated moment for infinity. And at the same time, Abe then pulled me back into where I was and showed me that I was sort of existing in that same space where Abe is me, but in this other weird place where they're in the future, like future me, conversing with me now, but it's still me in the future, if that makes sense. And I know it's like, uh, my mind is exploding, but... The way that time has been shown to me and described to me and what I've been trying to relate to you is that it is this vast infiniteness that there's no start, there's no end, there's no sequence, and it's like everything is sort of happening at once and it can be played with in the sense where if you are not in physically that space and time, you're out of it in the non-physical, you can literally like play with it and zoom into different places. Abe is saying, yes, you can play with it, but not like Play-Doh, more like an open box of marbles. One day I will be able to get it off of my tongue in describing um, time a little bit more and I'm sure it'll come up but anyways let's get back to what's happening in terms of this video I kind of went off on a tangent so what Abe is doing right now is introducing us to that woven tapestry of time in a way for us to understand it a little bit better um, moments being repeated over and over and over again in connection to this planet Nibiru, this planet X thing happening, um, making its orbit every 3,600 years or so approximately and coming back into where it basically started. So let's dive deeper into that because I asked a lot more questions. So I asked them to describe to me exactly what happens because if the sun turns into a black hole and sucks up planet X. Like how, how are we existing? How does this infinite time loop work? How do we get to where we are and this whole relationship with planet X? And what came through was, so after the black hole sun swallows up planet X, as well as anything else in close proximity in the 3D galaxy, a portal is opened up in the woven tapestry of time. This portal connects the sun back to the moment in time when the open energy of the split between 3D and 5D occurs. When planet X energy merges with the 3D Earth and takes the 3D Earth out to the far reaches of the galaxy. Abe even admits that this is very confusing. Um, so basically, Abe was saying that when Planet X comes back around, the energy of Planet X will merge again with the energy of 3D Earth because they are the same planet, essentially. And when it merges with the 3D Earth, it takes the 3D Earth um, planet out into the outer reaches of the galaxy to start its orbit of that 3600 years. But the the original planet x the physical planet still exists um in the galaxy's orbit and that's what's going to be sucked into the sun when it turns into a black hole so the energy goes with the 3d earth because it's the same but the physical planet um, stays in that orbit to go into the black hole its destiny Abe goes on to say that the open portal energy that's opened after planet X um, is swallowed up by the black hole, that open portal energy offers creative energy. The portal of energy opens to the moment in time that the split of 3D and 5D occurs, and new creative energy is restored. The 3D Earth is taken out to the outer reaches of the galaxy because that energy needs to play out and come back around in 3600 years or however long the orbit is. 
However, when Planet X enters the sun that turns into a black hole and a portal is opened in that woven tapestry of time, that portal opens up a restored 3D sun as well as a restored 3D earth. It's not the same 3D earth that we left because that one is now playing out its energy in the far reaches of the galaxy. It's in its new 3600 year orbit. But the 3D Earth that's restored is the 3D Earth 3,600 years ago. So that when that 3D Earth that we leave, that's now in the outer orbit, comes back around in 3,600 years, we're going to be in the same place for all of this merging of energy to happen once again. Abe says, this is the nature of infinity every 3,600 years. And I said, you know, so 3,600 years ago, if the Earth, or if this time loop, infinite time loop, whenever this breakaway happens in the future, 3,600 years before that, like, you know, there was a civilization on Earth, things were happening, So does the time loop just start in the middle of conversation, like in the middle of whatever was happening at that time, 3,600 years or so ago? And Abe said, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, so what was happening at the beginning of this time loop? And Abe said that it didn't really matter. The start of the loop is not relevant Central to this infinite time loop is the Earth split, which comes at the end of the loop. I hope that made sense. I then asked, what about before 3600 years ago? And what came through was, before 3600 years ago, the galaxy opened portals of Earth's infinite nature based upon other elements of planetary shifts. The nature of infinity is like capsules of time in Earth's history being played out over and over and over again. I asked, does it happen every 3,600 years, this infinity loop? And what came through was, no, just this loop of infinity is approximately 3,600 years, or whatever the timeline for Planet X to make its full orbit back again. I asked, Does the loop play out over and over and over again in the same way each time? Or because of free will, can we make different choices without knowing that we're making different choices in each of these loops? And what came through is that the open energy of the portal of infinity plays out the same way each time. And I said, so does this mean that the same wars are going to play out, the same people are going to suffer, the same duality and hate are going to take place? And what came through was, yes, but these capsules of infinite time serve as learning purposes for other dimensional races, future incarnations, open energy of creation to know what not to do. 3D Earth was opened or created not to inspire wars and hate and poverty and duality, but to inspire love and very open hearts and community and gathering together in oneness in those windows of hate and duality on your planet. The emotion of love is lost in the non-physical in energies above the ninth dimension, Not because they do not hold love, but because the emotion of love is tied to duality, and there is no duality in the ninth dimension and above the way that you would perceive it on earth. So for these beings, love is not an emotion, it is not in vain. In lower dimensions, such as your 3D planet, you have the capacity and ability to know great love because you know great pain and suffering. That is not an emotion that higher frequency beings in the ninth dimension and above have the capability of experiencing. When they witness pain and suffering playing out in your 3D Earth planet, they also witness love and oneness in hearts, experienced like no other. This is not witnessed in a way where they take pleasure in the pain and suffering of your planet, but 
it is witnessed in a way where they better understand wholeness in their hearts. Not in vain is their love, but in great strength, due to what has come before in the wholeness of the entire universe. Your role in the 3D Earth experience, yes, including the pain and suffering, adds to the overall wholeness of love and oneness in the hearts of those in other frequencies and dimensions and beyond. That in itself is the infinite cycle of the expansion of the heart in oneness and love that expands and ripples out through the entire universe. Also in regards to these infinite time capsules, these loops of time playing over and over and over again, um, I asked if it also, because this seems to be on that larger macro planetary scale, if these infinite time loop capsules happen on our individual timelines and in our individual lives. And what came through is yes, your individual lives also contain those infinite time capsules of memories, moments, looping over and over and over again, but on a smaller scale and probably in in terms of time in shorter um, sort of capsules versus these 3,600 year capsules, we have maybe smaller moments encapsulated in time. And I am seeing like a box of marbles or capsules of some sort. It's just like all there. And I'm asking like, why does the 3D Earth, after the split, why does the 3D Earth have to move orbit? Why does it have to go to the outer reaches of the galaxy to have this larger orbit? And what came through was that central to the ascension, that 3D and 5D Earth split, is the movement of the 3D Earth. Um, galactic beings are helping with the movement of 3D Earth into its new orbit, um, but it has to move. And I'm asking, why does it have to move? Um, and they're saying that the open space, um, open energy of space will help uh, the 3D Earth to complete its orbit so that it can align with the cold hole of blackness that the black hole of the sun when it comes back around in 3600 years because in 3600 years it will be ready to be released as that 3d earth again there won't be any life on it any substantial life and it will be ready to reintegrate back into the universal energy um, back into that black hole sun to create that burst of new energy, the new portal um, to be created for the whole infinite time thing to start all over again. I then asked, is planet X and planet Nibiru the same thing? And what came through was yes and no. Yes, because they are the same planet, Planet X energy from that 3D perception is coming around again to merge with Earth 3D and take Earth 3D out to the outer reaches of the galaxy. Planet Nibiru energy from the 5D perception is coming around again to merge with Earth 5D and open a portal into the new 5D galaxy where new Earth 5D will be found. It's the same Earth Gaia but with a new coat of paint. I asked, will there be any sort of crash or cataclysm? And what came through was no, just a strong merge of planetary energy. So again, just to recap, the actual planet of planet X or planet Nibiru is coming into the orbit and it's gonna stay separate from Earth, but the energy that planet X or planet Nibiru holds is important for our current Earth. So going back into our current Earth, we have 3D and 5D perception. In 3D perception, they will perceive this planet as planet X coming into their awareness. That planet X energy will merge with the 3D planet to take it out into the outer reaches of the galaxy to start its 3600 year orbit. Now from the 5D perception, they will see this planet um, but from 5D, it is planet Nibiru. The energy of that 
will come into 5D Earth planet where we are right now and it will open up a portal to sort of birth um, the new Earth 5D and this creates that split between the 3D and the 5D planets, um, I guess both physically and energetically, although we don't really go anywhere. It is just a shift in consciousness and dimension from exactly where we are. So for this question, they're just playing with the name here because it goes by two names, I guess, Planet X and Planet Nibiru. So they're just kind of playing with it to show those two different perceptions. One perception is 3D, one perception is 5D. I know that kind of sounds confusing, but I hope it made sense. In terms of Planet X, Planet Nibiru, um, bringing any sort of changes to Earth, um, I know this is connected to the pole shift. It's connected to uh, very strong weather patterns and destruction across the planet. And there is information about this that's been coming through. But right now, we're not going to be sharing that information just yet. Uh, the perfect time will come for us to share that information in a way where it won't be taken as fear-based. But for now, what's coming through is I'm sensing a very strong, um, it's like Planet X and Earth are like magnets and it's very magnetizing. And what's been coming to me is uh, they're aligning. So because the energy, because essentially we are Planet X in the start of Planet X's orbit. Um, the energy of Earth right now and the energy of Planet X, us in the future, has to align because we're going to merge energetically. In the 3D perception merge, uh, we're being taken out to the outer reaches of the galaxy to start the new orbit. In the 5D perception merge, we are creating opening up into New Earth 5D when that happens, when that merge happens. But the planets have to align energetically. So that's probably also why the Earth has to go through that pole shift because it's twisting and shifting to get to that same um, alignment in terms of matching uh, where planet X is or they're both shifting in order to like it's like fitting the puzzle pieces together and the puzzle pieces are a little bit um, like twist it's turned so we have to turn the puzzle pieces around so that those puzzle pieces can fit together um, but along with this whole energetic shift of the planets it's like also planet X is bringing with it a lot of energy so that's also hitting the planet um, but there is a lot energetically regarding this whole pole shift and changes to the earth that's going to be happening. But right now, it's just kind of understanding where it's coming from. And of course, Abe is adding on that there's nothing to fear. Um, everything is unfolding in perfect timing, and you are exactly where you need to be. And then I asked, you know, going back to the whole... Um, infinite capsule of time thing where it just keeps happening over and over and over again I asked so why does that like why do we have to create new earth 5d if apparently it already exists somewhere you know in some other infinite capsule of time like it's gonna happen and um, what came through was basically you still have to create it from where you are because from where you are in the now moment, New Earth 5D doesn't yet exist. It's you're in that creation process. So it's not like all of you can give up because A, that's not going to happen because in this capsule of time, we move to New Earth 5D. But it's like if everyone were to give up, the timeline would shift. Okay, so it's coming to me now where... Um, there are capsules like those infinite time capsules for the different timelines. So it's more so about, okay, if you want to just give up right now, you're basically going to jump to a lower timeline of not shifting with the new earth. So you still have to do the work because it's not going to do it for you. You can just 
fall into a different timeline because we're still kind of in that place where there are multiple timelines and you're aligning to the timeline that you want to be on um, because that infinite capsule of of time is created for each of the timelines if that makes sense so which one do you want to align to because yes the new earth is already created in an infinite time capsule it's playing out over and over and over again but you are in a space right now where you still have to choose in your now moment what timeline you want to be on (laughs) this is a lot of information about very confusing things Um, but I'm gonna stop here Oh, okay. So first, let me go over one thing that did come through later in this transmission. Um, And this has to do with the three days of darkness. I did a video about the three days of darkness, one of my first few videos. Um, And I guess I didn't have all of the information at that time, because this is kind of new information. It's new revelations in terms of what I've been noticing is my awareness and my ability to interpret the information is only, it's only as expansive as where I am in terms of what I am consciously aware of. So it's like me now being aware of the sun turning into a black hole, which I was never aware of before. Now that I'm aware of it, it now expands my ability to interpret the three days of darkness from this more expansive point. Um, so this is what came through. Basically what was said was the, the, the 3D sun turning into a black hole is the three days of darkness. It's connected. And Abe said, we did not mention this before to Jessica because she did not understand this concept yet of the sun turning into a black hole. But now it's coming into fruition in her awareness for the greater puzzle um, to take shape. I'm sort of getting new information right now, so I'm not going to read my notes and I'm just kind of going to go based upon what's coming to me right now. And what's coming to me is like, I was at, I was wondering if there when the three days of darkness comes around, if there would have been a complete split between 3D and 5D. And a part of me feels like yes, but also no. So I feel like the consciousness will have been completely split, but maybe not the reality of 5D will have completely split. So it's almost like the three days of darkness will be the 3D sun turning into a black hole. There will still be people in 3D, 3D consciousness, who will experience these three days of darkness, the sun turning into a black hole. Um, Those in 5D consciousness, I want to say that they're not, or I want to say that they will be experiencing the three days of darkness, but what's coming through when I tap into Abe, it's like, if you're in 5D consciousness, you may or may not experience the three days of darkness, but even if you do experience the three days of darkness, it would be from sort of behind the veil. It's like you will know that that's not um, a 5D thing. You'll know that that takes that that is taking place for 3D. I'm asking like, how does the sun come back after those three days of darkness? Because for 3D, the sun has turned into a black hole. So the sun... Okay, so what's coming to me is like a facade. It's it's an illusion. So it's like the sun playing its part for three days. It's going to turn into what it will turn into. So it doesn't actually turn into the black hole at that time. It is kind of like giving humanity a taste of what it will turn into in the near future however long it's going to take till it actually turns into a black hole so it turns into it's an illusion for three days it's an illusion but during those three days of darkness changes happen on the earth this is a time for people in 3d to realize hey something's going on 
like the, the, the things our reality is not what we thought it was it gives them this time to question their reality and find their higher um not necessarily purpose but find the rope to hope to be like where do i go from here what am i supposed to be doing turn to people who are more spiritually awakened um and figure that stuff out so that they can get on that train to 5d this will last for three days other things are going to take place that i had brought through in terms of nature and what's going on with the planet during those three days um, i'll share that in a different video but a lot of shifts will take place on the planet during those three days of darkness it's the sun playing its role possibly something to do with raw too it's not but it's it's an illusion it's not real the sun didn't actually turn into a black hole for those three days of darkness it's it's just giving a taste of what what is to come um and so after those three days of darkness it's like the five for five people in 5d consciousness their 5d sun will return the three days of darkness will have or will help a lot of people in 3D shift into the 5D or at least moving towards 5D. It'll shift a lot of people's consciousness. Otherwise, after those three days, the sun, even in, even the three day, even the 3D sun will come back on the 3D side. And I'm asking Abe, like, the sun can do that? It can just turn itself into a black hole and then turn itself back into the sun? And... They're saying the sun is source, essentially. It is a, the physicalness of source in our galaxy, basically. It's connected to source. It can do whatever it wants. <laughs> it's coming through. Um, but it's playing its role to help. It's like a last-ditch effort to help people in 3D awaken, wake up, and say like something's going on have them shift their consciousness about their reality and that's the sun playing its role at that time um to help sort of herd the last few people into 5d that it can um okay so anyway this was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was quite confusing, but again, even if you don't understand it, a lot is being integrated on a much deeper level. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Until next time, together we are Abe in oneness and love.